Welcome back to the fourth video um, for the GCSE Chemistry AQA specification. Uh, we're looking at the topic four in paper one, which is chemical changes. If you do have a specification uh, alongside you, then this is on page 40. Again, as before, what we'll do, there's a series of questions, uh, various different command words. I've tried to use a range of different questions and we'll go through the questions. I'll give you some hints about um, how you might go about answering them. You can pause the video, attempt to answer the questions and then the mark schemes will follow each question and you can uh, correct your work or mark it appropriately. The first question we have here has a, a diagram uh, that accompanies it and you're asked to name the product from the reaction of magnesium in the figure okay and then also the second part the magnesium needed heating before it would react what conclusion can you draw from this and there are various options where you tick one of them so we've been asked to name so only a short answer is required here so the picture shows magnesium burning in air. So you have to decide what is it in air that magnesium is reacting with. Okay, and if you know what it is reacting with, you can then determine what the product of that reaction would be. The second part of the question, the magnesium needed heating before it would react. You can see in the picture there you've got a Bunsen burner and it, you may well have done this at school where you have to heat the magnesium in the flame in order to start the reaction. So what conclusion can you draw from this? Well, you're only allowed to tick one box. So the option is reaction is reversible, reaction has a high activation energy, the reaction is exothermic, magnesium has a high melting point. From this diagram, you cannot tell if it's reversible or not. Okay. Um, from the diagram, it is showing that you're having to put energy in in order to get the reaction started. Okay, so that is a clue as to what the answer might be. Okay, pause the video now and attempt the question. The mark scheme is there for you to mark your work or make any appropriate corrections. The next question here is about electrolysis, okay, a subject, a topic area that many of you uh, will find difficult. And it starts by saying zinc chloride is an ionic substance. Okay, so it's made of ions a zinc ion and a chloride ion. So if you remember, a zinc ion is a metal ion, so it will always be positive. So metals are always positive ions. When zinc chloride is molten, it will conduct something or other. Okay. The two things that you will have talked about conduction with will be electricity and heat. Okay. So you need to consider which one of those is most appropriate to go in that space. Zinc ions move, for, to move towards the negative electrode where they gain electrons to produce zinc. Name the product formed at the positive electrode. So if the positive ions are going to the negative electrode, you need to consider which ions might go to the positive electrode and then what might be formed there. You then need to explain why zinc ions move towards the negative electrode. So why is it that they go towards the negative electrode? What type of reaction occurs when the zinc ions gain electrons? So if you remember the pneumonic oil rig, that will help in this scenario. So pause the video now and answer the question.
Okay, the mark scheme is there to help you mark your work. The next question starts with a statement. So when different salt solutions are electrolyzed with inert electrodes, the product at the negative electrode is always a metal. Describe how you would test this hypothesis in the laboratory. You should draw a labeled diagram of the apparatus, give the independent variable, describe what you would see at the negative electrode, excuse me, if the hypothesis is true. So the key points here, if you look at the number of marks for the question, it's five marks. You've got two marks at the end there, you've got one for the independent variable and one for the observation. So that would suggest that there's three things you've really got to nail in your diagram. Okay, With electrolysis, a circuit is needed, Okay, so you've got to think about uh, what circuits need in order to make them work. Okay, um, The solution needs to be in a, a suitable uh, container. So what might that be? What might you label that container? Um, and then also you're going to need to show um, the, the apparatus that the electricity flows through into the solution. What are, what are those things called that go into the solution um, to allow the electricity to flow around the circuit? Again, the independent variable, remember, independent variable is the thing that you change. Okay, so you're going to alter something each time. All right, so what is that thing that you'd alter? And the observation, remember, it's an observation. It's what you see. Okay, so what are you going to see at the electrode? Okay, specifically the negative electrode. Pause the video now and attempt the question. Use the mark scheme to mark your work and put any corrections in that you need to. This question, okay, this is a uh, extended answer question, so you will be assessed on using good English and your spelling, punctuation, and grammar. Describe a method for making pure crystals of magnesium chloride from magnesium and dilute hydrochloric acid. In your method, you should name the apparatus you will use. You do not need to mention safety. So with these with these questions, students regularly get carried away and just regurgitate what they've done from a required practical. Things you need to look out for, it wants you to make magnesium chloride. Okay, and it even tells you to use magnesium and dilute hydrochloric acid. It also mentions that you should name the apparatus. So every time you name the apparatus, you need to say what you're doing with it, okay, and why you're doing that. All right, so really think about telling the examiner what you're going to do step by step and why you're doing each step. Okay, you might want to mention what the variables are. You might want to mention things that you might keep the same, known as control variables. And then specifically, an area where students sometimes lose marks is about making the crystals towards the end. Okay, how do you, what apparatus do you use to to go through the crystallization process? Pause the video now and attempt the question. As this is an extended response, it's a, a leveled question. So you can see there's level one, two, and three. And right at the bottom there, for one or two marks, there's simple statements of some of the steps in a procedure uh, for obtaining magnesium chloride. Your method might not even lead to a valid result. Okay, Level uh, two, where there's three or four marks, 
there's a description of the procedure for obtaining magnesium chloride. Uh, the answer must include a way of ensuring the hydrochloric acid is fully reacted or a method of obtaining magnesium chloride crystals. So if you don't have that part, then you can't achieve level two. Level three is well organized description of the laboratory procedure for obtaining the magnesium chloride that could be picked up and followed by another person. The answer must include a way of ensuring the hydrochloric acid is fully reacted and a method of obtaining magnesium chloride crystals. So you could see in level two, it was or a method, whereas in level three, it's and. So the, the relevant content that you can choose from is as follows. Pause the video to mark your work and to make any corrections. Okay, we've got a, a simple sort of low demand question here. So lead nitrate solution reacts with potassium iodide solution. The reaction produces a solid. Give the name of this type of reaction. So there's a specific name for when two solutions react together and make a solid. Okay, you need to pick that from that list. I imagine you're considering two of those and you definitely ruled out one. Okay, um, this is definitely something you should know. So if you're unsure, go away and look this up and then come back. Pause the video and attempt the question. The answer is precipitation, so correct any work you might need to. This is a, a term to remember, and remember it's from two solutions reacting to form a solid. A longer question here, again a, a kind of extended response question. There's a table talking about mercury cells and membrane cell. So the electrolysis of sodium chloride solution also produces chlorine and sodium hydroxide. In industry, the electrolysis of sodium chloride solution can be done in several types of electrolysis cell. Some information about two of the cells is given. Okay, so you've got things about the cost, substances used, the electricity, um, the quality of the chlorine produced, and the quality of sodium hydroxide produced. The question at the bottom then ask you to use the information and your knowledge and understanding to compare the environmental and economic advantages and disadvantages of these two types of electrolysis cell. Right, so a bit tricky. So you definitely need to use the information because it's it said use the information. And the other important part is it said to use your information and your knowledge and understanding. So you need to bring something that's not in the table. Right, so you need to make explanations or links using your own knowledge and understanding, um, not just regurgitating the table. And then you need to compare the environmental and economic advantages and disadvantages. So you need to be saying what's good about one and what's bad about another, that kind of thing. Pause the video now and attempt the question. Okay, you can see that it's an extended answer question, so you've got a leveled uh, response, uh, one, two, and three. So to get the top marks there, it's a detailed description of environmental and economic advantages and disadvantages comparing the electrolysis cells. The kind of content that the examiners will be looking for is as follows. So if you pause the video now and use this to mark your work and make any corrections, and that brings us to the end of this video.